In this video, we are going to be talking about C-beam elements inside of MSC Nastran. The first thing I will discuss is when to use a C-bar or C-beam element. If you have a copy of the Linear Static Analysis User's Guide, there is a section on C-bar elements. So I recommend reading this section first. There is also a section on the C-beam element. Now, just to make this video short, I'll quickly go over when to use the C-bar and the C-beam element. Now, my personal recommendation is that you use the C-beam element. It has a wider range of applications, whereas the C-bar element is a little bit limited. So that's why I recommend using the C-beam element. Now, when do you use the C-bar element? Now, if you look here down the list of bullet points, it tells you when to use it. Uh, one of the bullet points says the properties must be constant along the length of the C-bar element. Now, what does this mean? Here, if you can see the top example, I have a uniform cross-section along the span of the element. So the properties are constant, they're uniform. Now, this is one example where I can use the C-bar element. One other thing too, the shear center and the neutral axis must coincide. So here, if you look at the cross section, uh, and if you were to compute where the shear center is, it would coincide with the neutral axis. Now, suppose you wanna model the example that's on the bottom. You can see the cross section is actually varying along the length of the beam. This is where the C-bar element can no longer be used. If you look at the C-beam element, the first bullet point says that the different cross-sectional properties may be defined uh, along the span of this beam element. So again, for the bottom example, you would use a C-beam element. Also, if you have a beam cross-section where the shear center and the neutral axes do not align, you would need to use a C-beam element because of that cross-section. So now, that's when to use the C-bar and the C-beam element. If you're dealing with a really simple example, such as the one uh, shown above, you can use the C-bar element. But once you've grown complexity, such as the example on the bottom, you will start using the C-beam element. Now, what's the next question that I wanted to answer? Uh, the little offsets, right. So pull open a copy of the reference manual for MSC Nastran and look for a section called Support for offsets, and here, let me go ahead and track that down. Support for offsets in element coordinate systems uh, for C-bar and C-beam elements. Uh, this goes into great detail regarding the theory on offsets, uh, but I'll skip that and I'll just go ahead and show you how to offset your beam elements. Now, I am going to be using MSC Apex to visually show you how to offset your beam elements or your beam cross-section. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because there are other programs that can let you do the offset, but it's not as easy. So I just wanna save you some time with MSC Apex. Now, if you want to get a copy of MSC Apex, you can get a free version for students from the MSC software website. Go to the website, go to students, here you see MSC Apex is listed as a program you can download. Uh, click download now, click register, fill out all your student information, click register. In a few days, you should get a link to download MSC Apex. Now here, I've already gone ahead and uh, created two elements for my plate. Let's go ahead and create a beam cross section. So here, let me go ahead and create a new beam cross section. It's going to be rectangular. It's going to be one inch in width and two inches in height. Let's go ahead and assign this beam cross section to this curve. Now this is currently a geometric curve. We haven't meshed it yet, so we'll do that in a moment. Now instantly I get this uh, sort of uh, uh, controls where I can actually control, uh, how do I say? the offset. So here I can move that up, I can move it down. If I want to, I can rotate it. So let's go ahead and take a step back. And then here I've actually purposely uh, defined an incorrect and incorrect uh, orientation and offset. Uh, so here, let me go ahead and actually 
add a mesh to this. If you want to turn this uh, beam cross section on and off, the top bar, just, just click it off and on. And then here, that's how you can control the display. Now, let me go ahead and give this a uh, curve a mesh. And just two, two nodes, so node one and node two on this side. And let's go ahead and export this. And make sure you select the right units because I did this example earlier today and I got myself confused when I expected the beam cross section to be one inch, but then all of a sudden it ended up being like 10 millimeters or something. Uh, so definitely watch out for that. Now let's go ahead and open the BDF file and look at uh, the bulk data entry for C-beam. Now, this is a C-beam entry. Uh, you start off in field one, field two, field three, and so on and so on. The second row, you start in field 11, field 12, 13, and so on and so on. You can see that in field six, seven, and eight, this is actually specifying the orientation vector of your beam. So here, if I wanna modify this, let's go ahead and double click on the span two. Now let me turn on the beam cross section actually. You can see the, the beam cross section is a little unusual. Let's go ahead and select a span two since that's the example we're working on. So you can see the orientation is a little off. Let's go ahead and make this 90 degrees for both ends. You can see the beam cross section has been updated. And now let's go ahead and export this. Let's go ahead and make sure you use the right units. And then let's look at the BDF file now. now here in field six, seven, and eight, that's the old orientation vector. My new orientation vector should be zero in, in the X, zero in the Y, and one in the Z direction. Here in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that the green vector corresponds to zero, comma, zero, comma, one. So essentially a vector. Now here, the orientation vector has been updated. Uh, this is a really small number. Notice that the exponent is negative 17, so this is effectively zero. 0, comma, 0, comma, 1. So that's my orientation vector. Uh, you can modify that here manually or you can do that uh, interactively with uh, the controls here on the screen. What about the offset? So here, let's go ahead and turn on the shell thickness. So you can see that for the shell thickness, we're not currently flush. Uh, we actually have the cross section sort of interfering with the plate. How do we fix this? Using the same controls here, Let's go ahead and offset it. So I'm going to offset it from the mid plane of the plate. So the thickness of the plate is 0.15 inches. So I'm going to go upward 0 0.075 inches. So basically half the thickness of the plate. Then I'm going to go an additional half the height of the, the beam. So that's going to be 0 0.075 plus 2 inches divided by 2. 2 inches being the height of the beam. So that would be in total 1.075. I'm going to repeat that for the other end. Uh, so now you can see that both ends are flush with the plate. And now let's go ahead and export this new BDF file. And so now you see the update. Uh, for end one, you can see that the offset is zero in the X. 1.075 in the Y and 0 in the Z. Now keep in mind this is this may be a little weird at first. Um, I also recommend going back to the linear static users guide just so you can see a diagram regarding how is the offset vector oriented. Here you can see that it's using the local coordinate system of the element, not necessarily the global coordinate system that you see in the bottom left-hand corner. Again, the offset vector that you see in the BDF file is in the element coordinate system, which is not coincident with the global coordinate system you see in the bottom left-hand corner. Now, that's how you do an offset. Let's see, what else is there to do? I think uh, those were the three questions I wanted to cover. Uh, the last thing I will mention regarding MSC Apex, um, if you're starting out with Apex, I recommend using this 
program to create very simple geometry and your mesh because here let me just go ahead and turn all of this off and on here let me just give you a quick demo of how easy it is to create uh, a finite element model in the tool now i remember when i started off with finite element analysis i have to go through the long process of creating my geometry uh, going through the process of creating a mesh uh, applying my properties such as the beam uh, cross-section properties so uh, at this point if you're new you may already be going through the process I'm here to tell you that if you can use MSC Apex to go through this process here I've just gone ahead and defined uh, three surfaces that can act as my plate I'm going to go ahead and mesh this And so here's my plate. I'm going to give this a thickness. Um, I already have a thickness already created, so I'll go ahead and apply it uh, to confirm that this this plate has a thickness. Let's go ahead and turn on the plot. You can see that there's a thickness property uh, created. And now let's go ahead and apply my beams. So here I'll go ahead and take an existing cross section and I'll select uh, these three curves here. Let's go ahead and turn on the beam uh, cross section. And here I'll adjust it uh, manually. So, like before, we'll go ahead and enter the part. Here, let's go ahead and uh, delete one of these spans. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I can just recycle this other span. So, here, if I want to assign this one to this other curve. Let me see if I can get this to pop out. Here it is. So here, let's go ahead and apply it to this curve. And then here I can do the same thing I did earlier in the video, which is uh, give it the, the offset I mentioned. And, and note that I'm not having to do a lot of clicks for this. Uh, basically, everything I'm doing right now is happening in live time. You can see immediately what's happening with each click. Here I'm just applying some uh, meshes to, to the one dimensional lines. And to confirm that you have uh, lines mesh with one dimensional elements, use this 2D beam span icon. You should see a cross section for each individual node. Um, let's see what else is there to cover. At this point, if I want to perform an analysis, let's go ahead and make sure this has a material. I want it to perform an analysis. I just go ahead and uh, right click place an analysis. I'm going to perform a normal modes analysis. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And the last benefit in using MSC Apex, it can create the BDF files for you. So if you had to run this in MSC Nastran manually, you can export a BDF file. Actually, uh, here, let me just show you that the results. Uh, this is an eigenvalue analysis, so I'm looking at mode shapes right now. If I want to perform a static analysis, I will have to give this a boundary condition, such as uh, constraints and uh, loads, such as the pressure, point loads, and so on and so on. So here, let's go ahead and export this file. If you want to export the file with the full solution 103 101 the case control section uh, here in the running man uh, click on export bdf here make sure you got the units correct let's go ahead and click export and if you look in the downloads or wherever your home director is you can see that uh, this is all configured with the nas necessary entries for nastran to run this file so here i have solution 103 uh, the case control section all of my beam elements my uh, plate elements, uh, the material, if it's in here somewhere at the nodes and everything else, it's all in this file. I can go ahead and run this in Astran. Now, I think I'll go ahead and pause there. If you have any comments on how to improve this video, uh, feel free to leave me a comment in the video comment section below. Thank you for watching.